All right, buddy. Welcome to another edition of Blend Blazers Podcast with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. And I'm here today with my very late sister. Yes, I'm going to say you knew I was going to get you. <laughs> with my very late sister, uh, I'm going to say her branded name, She Thorough. But those of us that know her, she's, she's Toya. Uh, how are we doing today, sis? I am doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is It feels weird to be on the other side <laughs> and not being in your chair. Uh, but... <laughs> Um, I'm thankful, thankful. You're doing amazing. Your platform is amazing. I know it feels weird in general because we're always on red carpets or seeing each other at school or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Which I just want to say, this is an inside joke. I, you were so channeling me yesterday. I was, <laughs> I was dying laughing when I left the room. I was like, oh my gosh, she's so me today. So we substitute, and uh, Toy is usually the nice one. And, you know, the kids love her and stuff, but she's really the nice one. I'm the walk in the room and everybody jumps up. Or when I speak, everybody jumps. So yesterday she channeled me. They did something. I was like, oh, my God. I walked in. The room was stale. It was cold. It was like a winter breeze. I was like, what is happening here? She was like, no, I'm sick of it. I was like, oh, this is a me day. This is this is a me day. I loved it. It was it was amazing. See how easier it was Absolutely. when you had when you channel me. It's it's an I easier day. I had no issues. Yeah, you got you men you you men definitely <laughs> change the room and and make your presence known and they they get it together. So makes for an easier day. It makes for a much easier day. I told you you just call it to attention. Everybody follows suit. Also in the studio, she doesn't know, but she's my adopted niece because me and her mom are that close. My adopted niece. Marley. Hi, Marley. Hi. How are you doing? Good. She's doing good because she's been tapping on the mics and everything. She's doing really good. I'm so proud right now. We were so long and last. I'm so proud of her right now. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, let's get into it. So tell us what you guys do. Uh, so I have a, a company called Thoroughbred Consultant, uh, my, known as She Thorough. And so basically we do beauty transformations, what I call therapeutic transformations now. Um, so we deal with people dealing with trauma, uh, people that is looking to tell their story. Uh, so our mission literally is to um, connect, transform, and inspire through storytelling, media, and fashion. Uh, for those that know, five years, we're coming up on our uh, fifth year anniversary. Uh, Kalia suffered third degree burns to her face from a grease fire. Uh, that same weekend, I wasn't there because I was in the hospital and I had got diagnosed with uh, bipolar depression. How did that happen, right? And so from there, I will go to get, hear stories from people that were dealing with suicide, um, depression. And so that's kind of how I like literally just started walking in my purpose, doing beauty transformation, wanting people to feel, you know, good on the outside. Um, and it just literally turns into something so much bigger than what I expected. Um, I've always been in the fashion. I always like to dress nice, um, you know. And so it's just, it just literally turned into me, things that I like doing for myself, doing it for others, and have manifested into something so great. Uh, but that storytelling piece is what's really powerful because we, uh, in each transformation shoot, is more than just makeup, hair, you know, and wardrobe. We end it with them sharing their story. So whatever that may be. So this is not your typical photo shoot. And I tell people, hey, listen, if you're just looking to take pictures, <coughs> I will refer you to a photographer. I know a million photographers. Okay. Um, but it's just that storytelling piece that because we, it ends in your dream photo shoot, but also um, we include a cinematic video which shares your story. So, you know, you have, uh, I'll use the first transformation I did with a 13 year old girl that was dealing with uh, depression and you want, wanted to take her own life. And her mom contacted me, they lived in Ohio and she was like, um, I literally just went through my daughter's iPhone and she had an iMovie, she created an iMovie acting out her own suicide. Whoa. And this was like at midnight and I'm in my living room and I'm like, I just came back from Stellar's 2018. Oh, you were there, February, yeah. Stella's. Yeah. Okay, that was the first time she thorough was acted as her own outlet at a big major, you know, um, award show. Because uh, beforehand I had been uh, interning uh, with the outlet here in Atlanta, and so come from Stella, my business was taking off, and I get this phone call, and I'm like, what? I'm thinking, why are you calling me? You need to be calling a, like, and she was like, I just need to. I'm trying to figure out what to do for our 13th birthday. Um. I said, well, let's just do a photo shoot because I, you know, started a blog, had already been taking pictures and doing that kind of stuff. So I was like, let's just, it just came, it just hit me. I was like, well, let's just do a photo shoot. Y'all, she flew out there that weekend. I got my team together, the same people, makeup artists, photographer that I use still to to, to this day, and we transformed that young girl. Uh, and throughout that process, we had we broke bread together. We had brunch. You know, the makeup artist came, did her makeup. Um, at that time, I had uh, my good friend Felipe, who. Mm -hmm. um, 
came and styled her because I really didn't have a, a capsule of wardrobe for all sizes like I do now. So I called him. He was coming from church. He came and bought some wardrobe because he had just finished styling one of his clients. Shout out to Felipe G. And um, we literally transformed that girl. I got her uh, phone. Uh, I'm on her Snapchat. I'm recording her. And so all of a sudden she goes from, she goes back to Ohio after the transformation. And now she's booked for her first fashion gig. Oh wow! Um, and and now she's in college and she's thriving. And so I was like, "Oh, wow! This is something." You know what I mean? But it's 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 literally it was nothing but God, and that's what we do. I mean, you, you slid into stuff I was gonna ask you later. Oh, sorry, okay, sorry, you, sorry. You just slid into stuff I was gonna ask you later. I get on, so passionate about it. I mean, I look. Kalia, no, that's why she laughing because she's so sick of me. I know she, right. she's she's containing herself so well. I, I just can't even. Imagine what that's like. All right, so since you're sitting over there, yeah, <laughs> tell me what it's like, like to to go to school and things of that magnitude. You know, because kids can be cruel, but then you know there's some good kids. So what is what is it like going to school for you? Um, it's basically like when you're walking to a show and people is just you're just people just looking at you all weird and making sure you don't have any like. Bodyguards and stuff like that. Oh, you, you so you think you're the princess? That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> I heard that you think you're the princess. That's what I heard. Her grandfather called her Hollywood Marley. That's so funny. She <laughs> described it like no, that. No, it's Princess Hollywood. Oh, Princess Hollywood. You better get it right, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> what grade are you in now? Fourth. How old are you now? Nine. She's ahead. I'm not surprised. Look at her, who her mom is. I'm, I'm so not surprised. All right, so let's let's get into this the story because I think your story is one that a lot of women are probably headed to and don't even realize they're headed to because well I'll say it, people in general because we're so used to, we're so used to running and, and getting things together and, and mental health and things are just not something we're prone to think about. So start from what it was like before all this happened. Like what was life like for you before all this happened? Before transformation? Well, before this this incident and everything. Oh. Like, I know you, you told us when we were together uh, at your event. So. so I started my plus size blog. I started plus size, a plus size, I don't want to say plus size, but I started a blog, a fashion blog in 2016. At the time, I was working in the banking industry, trying to figure, figure life out. I had got my master's degree at AIU, where you attended. Shout out I, don't to AIU. The, I don't know whether to shout or boo. I, I haven't decided yet. I don't know whether you I'm still booing. trying to figure that out? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out where I sit with that. So, so I was in banking. Uh, my, my brothers, my fam, my uh, brothers and my dad, they come from the financial industry. And so after undergrad, I went into that space because I already, you know, they were in it. And I thought that was the path I was supposed to take. Was working at SunTrust Bank. Literally was working there up until I got that phone call. Uh, from the young lady and after I did that transformation I knew I'm like I have a greater purpose in life is not to sit at a desk although I met some amazing people working in banking I mean just the relationships that I was able to build at uh, that desk on Memorial Drive in, in uh, Stone Mountain I knew that I had a greater purpose in life and um, yeah I was doing media while I was working in banking so you know kind of got introduced to the mic doing red carpets, that was definitely not a path that I thought I would take. Me either. Uh, <laughs> seriously. Me either. Uh, seriously, uh, the, the company that I interned with, you know, they, she she literally put me on the spot. We were going to, um, she invited me to a non uh, nonprofit doggies on the catwalk that they do at, um, uh, in Buckhead, yeah. shops at Buckhead. And they were doing a nonprofit there, uh, a fashion show with dogs. And uh, I just tried not to roll my eyes. I'm sorry, if anybody wants me, I tried not to roll my eyes. And so uh, the young lady, Carmen, shout out to Carmen, shout out to InStyle Atlanta. She was like, she had her mic and stuff, and she was like, "Hey, I need you to interview Monica Pearson." I was like, "What?" She was like, "I need you to interview Monica Pearson." And at the time, I didn't know Monica Pearson was like, you know, one of the. I was about to say, Biggest, that's Monica Pearson. That's Monica I didn't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm still, you know, Atlanta's still, I'm, you know, fresh, you know, for me. And so I didn't know she was like the big news lady and, and just so graceful. And 
I said, okay, because I've always had a love for talking to people, and I've always had a love for hearing people's stories. And so I interviewed her, and I had, I didn't put the mic down. After that, I was like, oh, this feel kind of good. And so I was do just do start doing red carpets and stuff. And so it, it just really, um, it just really, I feel like I know God put me in that space to give me the training, to give me, you know what I mean, uh, the knowledge and everything, uh, which led me to, you know, everything that I'm doing now. So when. The incident happened. Where were you? Because you speak about that you were in a mental hold and all that stuff. Tell me that story. How did how did that happen? Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, that that week of the accident. So Kalia accident happened August or um, April fourteenth, two thousand eighteen. Uh, so f- that the week leading up to that, I that Wednesday I got invited to do a um, event with David Banner and Hennessy. Still to this day, do not know how I got an email inviting me to this event. And so I called my brother that Tuesday and I'm like, hey, you know, I got the Sheet Thorough brand that I'm pushing and I got Heat Thorough for the men and, you know, I need someone to come with me to this event. My brother, Nassim, who you interviewed, Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Nassim, he came all the way from Charlotte to come to be with me to go to this event. So that Wednesday, I I came back. Thursday, uh... I just was on go. Like I said, people were trying to buy merch. Um, I ended up getting a, a, a lady contacted me from Charlotte who uh, was good friends with my brother who wanted me to start doing shirts for the teachers in Charlotte. So that was like a major contract. And my brother told me, he was like, Toya, success, I know, you know, you out here, you grinding, it happens fast. Make sure you prepare for what's to come mm. because... All it takes is one person with a great relationship and all of a sudden you're getting all this business, right? And, and so be, be, you have to be prepared. Make sure your process is in place. Make sure you're prepared. Well, of course, I, never, I didn't know what that looked like. I just knew how to work and hustle and grind. And, so, and then, uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's just you trying to do it all. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you can't afford to pay people. You know, you maybe have friends and family that help and stuff like that. Well, you, you know, some people do. And um, I'm blessed to have that. But it's still, like, never seem enough because you don't want to burden them and everything. And so, anyway, we go to this event. My brothers end up staying with me for the remainder of the week. Here it is, Friday morning. <laughs> okay, so that Thursday night, I could not sleep. I could not sleep. Me and Marley went outside before she went to bed, and we were looking up at the stars. And it seems to sound so weird, right? It sounds weird talking about it, but it's literally, literally like we were manifesting everything that we're doing now. So me and Kalia, we looked up at the stars, and... It was like it was like the sky was just so full of so so many stars, and I was like, Kalia, pick one, <laughs> pick which star. And she said, I want to go to that one. <laughs> and I said, we, Well, we're going. And I still have the video clip to this day. It's in our documentary on on YouTube on Pretty Thorough Channel. And I said, We're going <laughs> to that one, baby. You are you you will see you will see is what I said in that video. And she Kalia said, I just feel like I'm alive. I did. Wow. Well, that Friday morning, my brother walked in my room, because he had still been there, and he said, come on, I'm going to take Marley to school. Um, I'm a, we need to go to the doctor. I was like, what's wrong with you? He was like, no, I need, to, we, I, need to, I'm, I need to take you to the doctor. I said, for what? He was like, I've been here since Wednesday, and you have not been to sleep. Mm. I was like, what are you talking about? Mm, I was a busy woman. <laughs> I, he was like, I've been here since Wednesday. You have not been asleep. So get Marley. We're going to go. So at this point, I'm looking at him weird. Like, he's trying to, like, what you mean? I got to go to work. I ain't got time. This, I need this extra money because I got things to do. And he kind of got, a support, <laughs> like, you know, he's like, how do you get that, that man tone I talked about? Because at first yeah, he was all home. gentle. He was all gentle. And he was like. Let's go. But not in a, you know what I mean? Oh, it was in an no authoritative way. Like, listen, this is serious. And whatever, let's go. What day was this? Because This did... was that Friday morning. This was April, Friday, April, um, Friday the 13th. Oh, Lord. Right? 2018. <laughs> and so um, he said, so, so anyway, we go. We go to the, um, we drop Marley off. We go to the doctor. Uh, and they end up admitting me. They said my blood pressure was so high, I was almost, I was about to have a stroke. Oh, God. So they admitted me, and, you know, they started running tests, and then all of a sudden, late that night, I've, I'm going to another facility. 
actually ended up at the hospital where I birthed Kalia at, not knowing they had a, a special area for, you know, people dealing with mental. And so it was just weird. It was just the weirdest day. So I'm in there, and my brothers finally came to visit me uh, later that day, that Saturday. Now, mind you, Saturday morning, obviously Mar my, Marley was with my, my, my brother because he had took mm -hmm. me to the hospital, not knowing they were going to admit me. Mm. So Saturday was when the accident happened to Kalia and uh, my, my sister-in-law. Uh, they were, you know, cooking out, and uh, my brother went to go discard, discard some grease, my other brother, and, um, you know, Kalia ran towards him. So it was like a freak accident. Mm-mm. -mm. <laughs> she'll tell her. I'm about to say, clearly, she has a different <laughs> recount of that. Uh, she'll give a more specific. I'm just giving a high level overview of what happened. And so, Saturday, after taking Kalia to Grady, my brothers had to come visit me in at the Cat Medical. Okay, so because I'm, I'm okay. So you went in. I went to the hospital Friday morning. And you went in, and they told you that your blood pressure and stuff was too high. I was about to have a stroke. So how we get to the psych ward? <laughs> so. Friday, I went in. They admitted me. They took me to the cab medical that night. Saturday, I wake up in the mental hospital. On what grounds? I guess it's about <laughs> I didn't know at that time. I didn't find out until, that's what I was going to get to, oh. until Sunday when they was going to discharge me. Well, obviously, I'm in there, and I'm like, this is, this is not a normal mm. hospital, right? And so <clears throat> Sunday... My, when, my, when they was about to discharge me, we're in the room. It's the doctor, my mom, and my dad, because by that time, my parents came from South Carolina. And the doctor, he was like, had papers, and he said, well, you, you know why you're in here? And I was like, no. And he said, well, you've been, you know, diagnosed with bipolar depression. Whoa. And I'm like, because I've never been suicidal. I've never been had, I, so I didn't know. But apparently what, I, what was happening was I was having an episode. So what my brothers had seen, and me not sleeping, me on this, we got, I got stuff to do. I got, I need things to do, and, and all of it is kind of laid out in the documentary, which is why I did the documentary. <coughs> because when you're in something, you don't know that, you know what I mean? Yeah. What's happening? You just on, the, and um, you watching all these entrepreneurs and these YouTube videos about, you know, you sleep when you die. Mm. You, you, can't, I wasn't sleeping. I felt like in order to get to the next level. I had to sacrifice sleep. I had to sacrifice not eating. I had to sacrifice all of these self-care things to obtain this whatever. You know what I mean? And so when he sat me and he was, I was like, no, I don't know why I'm in here. And he said, well, you've been diagnosed with bipolar depression. And so I'm crying. And he said, you know, don't like geniuses have been diagnosed. You have, you know, Winston Churchill, you have Mariah Carey, you know, we know Kanye West. I mean, he don't take his meds or whatever, but he said, you know, don't look at it as a negative, you know. And so I'm still looking at him weird. <coughs> like, what's going on? I'm crying because, I, again, the first thing I thought was, oh, bipolar depression means you crazy, mm. right? And so those are the stigmas t attached to mental health. Like you, like you said, <coughs> what you doing in the psych ward? For some people, that may be offensive or that may come off like, damn, like I feel... I already feel like this 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 title attached to it have me feeling like I'm crazy or people deem me crazy, but no, it's really a superpower. You know what I mean? It's just like autism, just like any other thing. Like, and so after he finished going through everything and my parents, I'm, I'm about to get up, my parents is like, <coughs> my dad, like, there's more. And I'm like, all right, what, what you talking about? He was like, well, there's been an accident, you know, with Kalia. I was like, what you talking about? He said, well, and he downplayed it. He was like, we got to go to Grady Hospital. I had never been to Grady. So now we go leaving the cab medical to drive to Grady, and they're walking me through the burn unit. Again, I'm thinking he downplayed it. Like, so I'm thinking maybe she, they got in a car accident, but he never disclosed what had happened. He just said Kalia and Disa, which is my sister-in-law, had you know been in an accident. Get to Grady and get to Kalia's room, first off, I had to, they made me put all this scrubs <coughs> and everything on. So I'm like, what's going on? Get to the room and my baby's laying in bed with tubes and her face is, is, is gone. It's burnt, it's like it's burnt, it's just gone, it's burnt off. It made me think of the scene on Face Off with John Travolta. And oh. 
Like, so I passed out. Like, mind you, I'm still trying to figure process. out, process what the guy just told me. To now I'm walking in the room and my, my four-year-old daughter's face is white. Wow. It's white. And um, she was in an induced coma. And uh, they, took, they took me to the family room. And this is when, when, you, when you are faced with that type of trauma and that type of um, pain, how God just show up because they said the, the surgeon wanted to meet you. And she walked in the room and she had that Delta Sigma Theta lanyard on, mm. a black woman, right? <coughs> surgeon. From new, up top at that, I looked at her and I smiled. She said, your baby going to be okay. And with me being a Delta, I'm like, God, this ain't nothing but you. Like, that was my signal, you know, to that was my, like, for God to say, hey, listen, this, you, it's going to be okay. <laughs> Look at this one over here. All right, since you itching to tell what happened. So do you remember what happened that day? Yes. You want to talk about it? Sure. All right, go ahead. So... But you gotta oh. sit still because they ain't gonna hear you. You spit in the <laughs> chair. I was outside with my aunt and my nose is shiny, so I went inside to get tissue. And I went in the kitchen and I saw fire just popping out. And I ran to my uncle's because they were sort of part in the living room at the dining table. Then I screamed, "Fire! Fire!" And then we ran out. And then when he when he Tried to dump it out. My aunt came in and tried to block me, but it got on both of us. And we hurried up, jumped in the car. Um, I was I was watching Elsa on my uncle's phone, um, and she making she was like look at her skin and crying. I wasn't. And then we got to when we got to the hospital. hospital uh, we went to the emergency group, and yeah. Okay, I think that's that's, she, she, that's they, a pretty good yeah. account. Pretty good account. Yeah, that's, that's, I think it's amazing that she can tell this story without even getting emotional. Look at you, big girl over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so the afterwards, after all this happens, mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff that had to happen after the hospital visit, her in the hospital. Talk about that, the surgeries and and stuff. Uh, well, thank God she just well she had like two major surgeries and then. Uh, she was in uh, an induced coma for a little over three weeks. Uh, amazing support. Amazing support. Like, if you go to Grady now, they got signs where you're limited to, <laughs> like, and this was pre this was before COVID. Because hmm. I'm telling you, the, the love and support that me and Clea received from people all over the world, the, I mean, the books and the food, literally every night at Grady, we had food being delivered. People just calling from all over the world. It was just phenomenal. My boy that played in, um, in uh, Australia, his team sending books. It was just just an overwhelming, um, just love, right? And so, yeah, I just went in grind mode. I left my job. I quit my job at the bank, and I was in. I was at Grady hustling. She thorough t-shirts. My dad was looking at me crazy. <laughs> he's super prideful, and he's looking at me. Of well, of course, <laughs> I am. You know, technically, I guess I am, right? Uh, <laughs> But that, you, there are never any words to describe you. Let's be very clear. There are never any words to describe you, ever. My dad was looking at me like, what are you doing? And I'm looking like at him like, I got bills to pay. So y'all going to get this $30 t-shirt or what? So what made you quit your job? I had to take care of my baby. I, what I, kind of question is that? I mean, I'm just saying, like, I in that moment, in my, with I all that mommy mode, already in. There was no way I could be, I know, I, I, that's right. Now you my those banking hours, you'd be like eight to five every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that well, I, Seven Trust at the time we were off at four, so it was awesome career at the time to be able to you know leave and go to media events after work yeah. and red carpet. So you know it was just it was perfect timing. But so many things was happening. Mind you, I did the transformation for the young lady, and I was still trying to process that because that feeling that I got after all of the things that were happening from her, I said, man, like this is powerful, like. My purpose, again, is not just to sit here and open checking and savings accounts. And then my daughter accident happening, 
Prior to that, my media stuff was was taken off, and I'm getting recognized that big. So I'm like, I just have to walk out on faith. And that, I had never quit a job. Like, that wasn't something that was easy. But the things that were happening around, and then I had a lot of things was happening as far as, like, suicide, like, on the news and stuff like that. And I'm like, now I go through something myself, and now I'm ha my, I see my daughter, and I'm having to take, it was no way mentally I was not able to, Go back to work. Well, I think that's the, the part because most <laughs> regular people would have said, Oh my God, I need this. Now I need to work harder on the job because right. that's the security for me. I need to make sure I have money for this, this, and this, this. The fact that you went the opposite way is the part that got me. I was like, Entrepreneurs think like that. It's like, No, I'd rather hustle and have the flexibility all, all the time. I'd rather hustle, have the flexibility to right. be able to do what I need to do, and I'll figure the rest out. Correct. So I think that's the part that got me. It was like, You instantly was like, Nah, I got to quit this because I'll figure it out, but I can't do this. And that's, that was rough. That was rough. That wasn't easy. That wasn't an easy decision, but um, it was necessary. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what you, like, I don't think everybody is built for no. entrepreneurship. You know what I mean? I don't think everybody is built to, you know, work a nine to five. And I'm not saying I won't make work a nine like that, but, you know. No, we're saying we won't work a nine to five. <laughs> no, we're saying we won't work a nine to five. It's, it's not. The thought of it disgusts me. I was, I was like, yo, so you're living for the weekend? Like, let's do the math when you work when you work at eight to five. Like, you work eight to five every day. By the time you get home, you're probably tired. If you have a commute, you're not getting home to six or seven. By the time you eat and actually relax, it's probably eight o'clock. It's time to get back in bed, do it all over again. So you're really living for Saturday because if you go to church, Sunday's probably shot. So you're really living for Saturday. So you're trying to cram everybody in one day to go back to it all over again on a Monday. The thought of it disgusts me. I, I literally want to throw up in my mouth. It's, it's, it's really a disgusting. Lot. Yeah. It's, a I, lot. It's, it's disgusting. The thought of it makes me sick. All right. So it's let's fast forward to where we are today. So mm -hmm. what we got going on now, Queen and Princess? <laughs> Leah, what we got going on today? Um, right now, we're just focusing on our brand and our candle line. We're trying to make sure we have that set out on Mother's Day. Um, and we're just making sure we go to these events and stuff, trying to sell our merch. And God, she sounds like you. She said merch. She sounds so like you. She's, you are your mother. <laughs> I got a birthday party coming up too so we try to make sure i go there uh wait a minute <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait wait wait, wait. <laughs> when, when is this birthday party and why have i not even been told about this shit it better be sometime in like july or something when oh. is this birthday party it's not for me it's for my friend my friend she's talking personal stuff I'm talking about, <laughs> oh, I'm about to say birthday party wait a minute <laughs> i mean i'm so i mean she's going to it's a birthday party but uh yeah clear all of that we have our candle line she pretty so basically we combined it our brand she I made thorough. the name. She made the name. She pretty. Uh, just because we are all about self care, we just kicked off our retail therapy, uh, and so that's why I'm rocking my my she therapy shirt, which uh, we just completed the second event. You was at the first one uh, in uh, partnership with JD Sports, but basically it's to bring people together to have these conversations, right? Um, about mental health. That's it. Everyone's going through things. Everyone have anxiety, like with. The way that they define uh, mental illness or mental health at nowadays, everybody got something. I literally. Everybody like, got literally. a tap of something. Anxiety, <laughs> PTSD, something everybody have, right? And so it's like, it shouldn't be a taboo thing. It shouldn't be all these stigmas attached to it, but we should be able to have open conversations, right? People stress, people play a full, entrepreneurs, even if you are living in your passion and purpose, it's like you don't have enough help. I, nowadays, you can't even pay people to do what you need done nope. the right way. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's just so much options out there, so much information out there. And so uh, the idea of she th uh, she um, retail therapy is to come together and is bringing my love for fashion, media, and storytelling and bringing it all in one space where we can have conversations around, around mental health, but not in a, a space where it feels <laughs> so daunting and so... You know what I mean, and it, it, but a, a space where there's we're surrounded by fashion and art, and we can talk about, like we're talking right now, you know, and laugh about certain things or and oh, I went through that too. What Atlanta traffic will have you? Yes, I get anxiety to go in traffic. Oh my like, god, I mean, whatever that rains, may be. You know, yeah. oh, if it rains, it's over. You can book it up. It's okay, over. what I meant to ask, I forgot. Uh huh. She thorough. Where did you get that from? Like, what made you come up with that? So I when I. When I what good? When Mary got the name is because 
forgot. Really? <laughs> that's fine because you have to explain yours too. So that's fine. <laughs> Mommy goes first, then you go next. So that's fine. Well, when I pledged in uh, uh, Delta Sigma Theta in college, my line name was Thoroughbred. So that's where my company came from, Thoroughbred Consultant LLC. And it started out as a management company where I was managing my homegirl, doing videos and stuff like that in the entertainment space. And I wanted to protect her uh, because I didn't want her to be taken advantage by guys. And, you know, them not paying her what she was deserving, worth. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want her to be represented in these videos, you know, in a, in a, in a, a negative light. You know what I mean? I wanted to make sure her, she was polished. She looked polished and everything. And so that's kind of how it started. And then it basically turned into what it is um, now. But when I came up with my, when I decided, okay, I'm going to do a website. And I started finding other areas that I was good at. And I wanted to incorporate other services. I was like, well, third bread is so long. Uh, let me just do She Thorough. And so She Thorough is uh, me. I'm from New York. I'm from Queens. And She Thorough, when, when somebody be like, oh, yo, She Thorough. Like, yo, She Thorough. I mean, she like, you know what I mean? These New York moments that's, you be having. I, I forget that she had so this New York So that's literally moment. where it came from. Like, yo, She Thorough. So. All right. So when you came with Pretty Thorough, how, how you got there? Uh, me personally, uh, I know from my side is that um, when I was in the hospital, everybody was like around me kept calling me pretty and all that. And since my mom already had Daryl and her in her brand name, she thought to add Daryl in mine. And since everybody was uh, like kept calling me pretty, she thought, okay, pretty that was the name. I'm gonna get some of my nerves. You know, I just adore her. She gets some of my last She gets you like, she gets you teary eyed. She, 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 she's sick. I'm trying to keep my composure. And, you know, because I'm already fighting with your story. And then this one over here, just the level of confidence that she has, all that you've been through, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see. So when you turn 21, what is what is your goal? What, what, is, what is your goal when you become a full-fledged adult? What do you see? Uh, Hair and your nails. You want to be a hairdresser? Yeah. She loves, she's creative. She loves hair. She loves anything beauty. I could probably make a serum so you can grow some hair back. Oh, you just gonna throw jazz with me on my own show. Okay, that's See, that's this. That was a get back when he called me late. That that. See, you were back. late, and uh, that you you were back. late. So there's that. <laughs> wow, that's what we doing. Okay, fine. Actually, hold up your bag. I want everybody to see your bag. That was a cute little bag you came here with. She has her mama's fashion sense. It's 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 so cute. It's adorable. Love. All right. So uh. Final thoughts. What do you want to leave with the people? Uh, advice, uh, particularly for women who may find themselves going, going, going. And what would your advice be for those kind of people? My advice would be, you know, don't give up. Seek help, whatever that may be. Um, come to a retail therapy session. <laughs> and let's just talk about it. Like, just get it off your chest. Um, book a transformation, a therapy transformation, you know, do all the things, take care of yourself. And I think that's something that I had to learn. Even being a mom, I, I automatically went in mommy mode. And that's why here it is now, it's taken me five years to even do this, right? Like to, to even come out and share my, I just kind of started hiding behind people and felt more comfort being behind the scenes. I became really fearful of getting back out there and doing a lot of the things. And so my business became really stagnant and it took for my brother to say look I understand what happened scared you and it's okay but you have to continue to work work uh, walk in your purpose because there's so many other people that needs to hear your story there's so many other people that needs to to come out of everything and so don't hide behind Kalia don't hide behind you know what I mean and and you're serving everybody but you're not even serving yourself you're not taking care of yourself you're not doing the things and so I just, after that conversation with him, it's like I started taking my, my health uh, seriously, um, just lost like 20 pounds, started working out. I'll ask you about I, that, but um, I, I was going to wait for you to tell me that because I saw that yesterday. I was like, she looks smaller. Just started just really making sure I go to, you know, get me some, get massages, you know what I mean? Even Walk. taking time, walking. And even if it's just me having a, my own moment and saying, hey, call him, uh, my family saying, can Kalia come over? Because... I started having separation anxiety being away from Kalia for a, a long time, too. I would have, like, this mommy guilt. So even if she will go to her grandmother's house or whatever, after a day, it's like, dang, I, I feel like I'm a bad mom because I don't have my daughter all the time. Wow. You know what I mean? So it was really deep. And so now it's just, this is me in my own transformation. Like, 
that I'm living. So the things that I'm doing for others, literally I, I have lived it and I'm coming slowly coming out of my own and cocoon, right? And and hence the butterfly on the candle. So all of it is like a line, but God's timing beats our timing. And I just want everyone to know, you know, don't give up, find something, whatever that may be, and just make sure you continue to, you know, just try to take care of yourself. And there's so many resources out there. We provide those resources at um, uh, retail therapy, so much free counseling that's out there. Shout out to my girl Lana, who's like over that portion of it, of, of finding different resources for these individuals. She, I did a transformation for her as well. She has a survival story, um, dealing with uh, depression, suicide as well. And um, she's just awesome. Her brand is worth it. And so she and I has, have partnered. And so um, I just want people to know that, you know, there is hope. And, um, you know, we just we just got to come together and we just got to talk about it and share our story. How do people get in touch with you? Um, Sheetharrow.com. I'm on at Sheetharrow on social media platforms. And, Instagram. Yep, on Instagram, et cetera. Facebook. And Facebook, yep. All YouTube. Right. Really? I mean, <laughs> you know you next, so what? Our song. Is what? <laughs> our song? You better shout that song out. Tell them about your song real quick. Uh, I saw it was made by Double R Music, like mom's friend. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really, really. <laughs> okay, so, coming. so 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 really quickly, I I can't not. <laughs> All right, so most of you who've been following us, uh, the Leadership Been Live podcast, me and Simone, you know Double R because he was with us for season two. I think season two, season three, Double R was with us. So you know who Double R is. He visits from time to time. He was a correspondent for about a year or two. Uh, so that's who we're talking about. That's why we laugh because he's he's almost like me and Toya's child. I'm sorry. I said it, Derek. I said it. He's almost like me and, and Toya's child. You know, amazing talent. He's got to keep people focused. So that's who we're talking about. He's an amazing artist. We're still trying to get him up there because that's what he's supposed to be. But that's who we're talking about. <coughs> All right. What advice you want to give kids who might go through what you've gone through? What would be your advice? My advice would be, be yourself, um, block the haters, and uh, it doesn't always matter what people think about you. Not everybody gets to have different things like hair and, um, yeah. How do people get in touch with you since you blabbing out your mom's social <laughs> media? So how, do they, how do they look at your stuff? Um, I'll talk about at school. I will do videos uh, that my mom haven't posted yet. Now who? Now who she throwing shade at? See they see how they turn on you just that fast? See how they turn on you that fast? <laughs> they do. <laughs> what's, your, what's your platform? Uh, Instagram name? Uh, my Instagram and YouTube. Name, my Instagram name is Pretty Thorough with the little A with the circle. At Pretty Thorough. Oh uh, yeah. And. Yeah. All right. All right. So there you have it, people. Thanks to my sister, uh, She Thorough, or Miss Latoya Hayward, for those that, AKA Miss Latoya Hayward, for those that are special. DKA, and, Delta Known As, guys. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, my, my adopted niece, Marley, thank you guys for stopping by today and sharing your amazing story. And I, yeah, we will see you same time, same place on Blend Blazers podcast with your host, Ricardo D. Rice. Make sure you put, sir. I'm the star of the show now. Wow. They come in the studio one time and they've already taken over. This is what I have to deal with. This is absolutely what I have to deal with. But it's okay because it's Marley. <laughs> Marley the Queen. Oh, Lord. In Hollywood. Oh, good God. Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs>